Hey guys, it's Alex, and today what I want to talk about is retention mechanisms. Now, this has a lot to do with the recent motor failure on the GT500. These are the cams that came off the GT500. And I've learned a lot in the last couple of days, and I've actually learned uh, how much people think they know, but in actuality don't know, because they're not familiar with retentioning and drive mechanisms. Now, just to give you a quick background. I was a millwright for 15 years. A millwright is a heavy equipment mechanic. We are exposed to everything and anything that reciprocates, spins, turns, pumps, lubricates, or generates electricity. Gearboxes, you name it. So when somebody says Alex has no experience on motor building, he shouldn't be talking about this, I kind of go, well, maybe I don't have experience on motor building specifically, but I have a hell of a lot more experience with drive mechanisms than anybody that has built a motor in the Ford industry. I can almost bet that I have way more drive. What does that mean? A drive mechanism, either a chain, a coupling, a keyway, a taper, a bolt. So a retentioning, a retention and drive mechanism. In my 15 years, I saw 8,000 different types. I saw failure points. I saw what worked and I saw what did not work. So the moment I was made aware that this car had a cut key on one of the cams, I immediately said, well, that is an issue. Now, I'm going to explain the best way I can to the people that aren't aware. And, and this mostly is for the four valve motor builders that say, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Well, I'm going to give you a bit of logic to see if you understand my point of view. OK, a lot of you motor builders have said this key cutting process is 100 percent normal. It gives us a little slack when it comes time to adjust the cam to get a degree or two out of it. Let me stick this out a little bit. To, to get a degree or two out of it when dialing in the cam. So this is what they tell me. You cut the key down and then you make it slacked on the keyway, which in my world is a big no-no. If this piece is responsible for driving this piece via pressure because there is a bolt and washer, but the bolt and washer are there to complement the keyway because that is the main driving mechanism the main driving mechanism of this whole piece right here is the keyway where is the highest point of stress on this drive mechanism the keyway 100 percent of the time now imagine you're on a two-step you're turning at six or seven thousand rpms you slam it so there's a lot of let's just say tension even if you have a bolt and a washer here at 120 foot pounds and it is pushing this gear up against this shoulder there's a drive mechanism which is the key so the key they slot so that they can gain some adjustment they want to be able to dial in the cam really nicely so that they can get adjustment well this is my logical way of thinking if the key doesn't matter this is the key this is the key way if the key doesn't matter when it comes to retaining or driving the cam. Remember, this gear drives the cam via a chain. If this doesn't matter, why do you keep it there at all? I'd love for a motor builder to say, you know what, Alex? We only put it there just in case. We should just remove it totally and make it non-existent because it doesn't matter. Well, no, I don't see that. I don't see people eliminating the key. They keep a chunk of the key in there. And the problem with that is, is the slack. How did this motor fail the first time? The motor failed the first time because one of these gears broke. That's right, one of these gears broke. So where's the highest point of stress on this gear? On the key. What happens if you then lessen the footprint of the key on the key way? And let's just say, even though you have a 120 foot pound bolt here and a big washer pushing down, in every situation that I have personally seen as a millwright, the key is the most crucial aspect regardless of the retaining bolt. A lot of times in pumps, vertical turbines, reciprocating anything or spinning anything, anything that's spun, even if the bolt was on super tight, if the key failed, it all failed. And that's the issue I have with this setup. So 
if you did not cut the key like this one did not cut the key right because uh, you know now if you look downstream of the cam right so look at the gear in correlation with the cam so it's pretty tight right the key and the cam key way pretty tight so if you have any slack let's say the bolt gets loose that's the kind of slack you got you, you know thousands not even it's very very tight but now let's look at the cam that has the modified keyway and the amount of slack that is now being let's say again for whatever reason this washer and bolt don't keep the tension like when originally built and now look at the end of the of the key and look at how much movement there is so imagine you have very tight piston and valve clearance you dial it in it's super tight and for whatever reason this bolt decides to get on the loose side or not really tight because you know it spins at 6,000 rpms you're on the two-step you hit a limiter whatever and then this retaining situation isn't as robust as it first was and it happens to walk because I've seen it happen in the millwright world a billion times if the key fails on any drive system that is the biggest culprit for failure down the road not so much the retaining mechanism so these builders are telling you hey well, yeah, I've been doing this for years what's the problem the problem is you are now negating the actual system that drives the cam from staying within tolerance now the other thing is this this is not billet this is powdered metal this is basically stock powdered metal nothing crazy why would you then remove material from a powdered metal piece and hope that it would retain a let's say different spec cam with higher lift more duration maybe made out of a different material and now you are hoping that the tension on the washer and the cut key that you negated about half the size of is going to retain properly my last motor had one of these break they're powdered metal now in the millwright world they make the same thing that they make for this car multi-keyed gears that's right not only a keyway here here basically every couple of let's say i don't know maybe a quarter of an inch or maybe an eighth of an inch they had multiple keys so that then you can put the cam exactly where you want it in correlation to whatever your your desired angle is so you can literally key 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 and keep moving things so that everything falls exactly into place and what you do is you put a key here and then you install the cam sprocket because it has a key way on the cam sprocket and you can then dial it in to your heart's content i'll show you a picture of that overlaid on this and they did the same thing to this now maybe this is something that the four valve world accepts but this isn't something acceptable anywhere else in the coyote world we don't do this in the coyote world think of this as a phaser and imagine there's an internal mechanism that is slotted and that is keyed on the shit on the cam so if it's keyed on the cam and there's an internal mechanism that slots a certain amount you can literally loosen the bolts here dialing your cam then retain the bolts and guess what after a bit of googling they make that for 5.4 5.8 engines they make a multi-keyed cam sprocket they make a multi-keyed main drive sprocket i'm sorry a slotted main drive sprocket this one is made out of billet on the multi-key one this one is built out of other uh, oh it's slotted so i thought wait a minute are the four valve guys just saving money how much labor is it to file down a key a keyway like this not long well but now you're filing down something that's powdered metal you're filing down something that is a weak material driving an aftermarket cam that has higher lift higher duration and you are now adding rpm to the situation you are taking half of the key drive mechanism away from it hoping that the tension of the bolt and washer will be enough to keep everything in place clown show
I'm sorry, guys. You guys might think that I'm some dumbass that just talks shit on the internet. I have more Millwright heavy equipment and, let's say, tighter spec experience than most of you motor builders because most of you motor builders deal with motors. I've dealt with everything. Ver turbines, uh, um, power plants where all of the multiple turbine or turbine pumps have to have a certain spec, a certain key, a certain amount of tolerance. So I know my way around tolerances and gears. And this is simple shit. This is very easy to spot for somebody that has a little bit of drive experience. So the good thing about this is, is that it has brought to light this issue. And if you have a four valve motor, whether it be a Cobra 5.4 or 5.8, you should be made aware that this is common practice by motor builders and they think there's nothing wrong with cutting down a powdered metal gear so that they could have slack on purpose to dial in the cams. And, you know, I'm one of these crazy guys that looks at the keyways, right? So there was obviously strain and stress on all these keyways at one point. Why do you think that is? Why do you think these keys looking strained and stressed weren't addressed in the previous build, right? These keys are showing signs of wear. There's actual lifted material here that shows you that there's a sideways, basically a side load on the gear, uh, on the keyway. And someone said, yeah, we're just gonna roll out and live with these issues here. And wouldn't you know it, this looks actually pretty fresh, to be honest with you. This looks pretty fresh. This looks, who knows, I can't imagine the last motor builder saw this and said, looks good, bro. And then finally, the coup de gras, this one. This one looks awful. This wouldn't have passed muster in any basic mechanic millwright shop ever. I, I should have gotten a call that said, hey, we need to get new cams because your cams are jacked up. By the way, I want to dial in. Okay, let's get some LNM NSRs so we don't have to cut the key down. So we'll get LNM NSRs, keep the key, keep the gear, things will be good. No. Custom, custom spec, custom dialing in. Let's keep the cams that have raised keyways based on some kind of abnormal wear on the drive system. Let's roll out, let's cut the key, and let's hope it lasts a while. Do you understand my frustration? Because this motor had a valve train failure. And if it had a valve train failure and it went to somebody to fix a valve train failure, and this was what they saw, raised key weight material on all four cams, ignored it, bought new stuff, filed it down, literally slapped it back together, and the car had a valve train failure again meaning intake and exhaust valves are both stuck open at top dead center with no rocker pushing down on any of the valves. This is what you motor builders that are on Facebook, Instagram, and in, in internal chat saying Alex doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Fine. I don't know what I'm talking about. Would you see this and think it's kosher and then take a powdered metal gear and shave it down and adjust the cams and hope at 7,000 RPMs this lasts for many years to come. If you do, you should get out of motor building ASAP. So there you have it guys, little update as to why I think this was um, an egregious oversight bordering on incompetence. And this is based on my 15 years of drive experience on pumps, reciprocating equipment, vertical turbines, pumps, you name it, it pumped because a motor is basically an air pump with an internal oil pump. That's all it is. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll talk to you later.